Welcome back. In this video, I'll be looking at 5.1 Resolving Faucets. 5.1 represents Chapter 5, Section 1 of the Pearson A Level Math Statistics and Mechanics Year 2 textbook. Now, before we look at resolving forces, it is very important that we get our notation correct. This notation over here means resolving vertically with upwards being the positive direction. This notation means resolving horizontally with the right being the positive direction. We can resolve using Newton's second law, which states that F is equal ma. F is the resultant force acting on the particle, m is the mass of the particle, a is the acceleration of the particle. Over here, we have a horizontal surface and a box on the horizontal surface. There's an applied force P newtons acting at an angle theta to the horizontal surface. The box accelerates along the floor at a meters per second per second. The mass is 3 kg for the box and the horizontal surface is smooth. If it's smooth, there is no friction present on the horizontal surface. The weight is given by the mass multiplied by g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity, and in mechanics we take g to equal 9.8 meters per second per second. I want to label all the forces acting on this particular box. First of all, I've got the weight acting vertically downwards, and the weight is given by 3g where g is equal 9.8 meters per second per second. The normal reaction is acting vertically upwards. I can label it R. The force P newtons has component forces. I can determine the component forces by forming a right angle triangle. Now, the force P newtons starting from here stretches out in this particular direction. So to get to that force P newtons, we have to take a right and then go upwards. The horizontal component of the force P newtons is P cos theta. The vertical component of the force P newtons is just P sine theta. A quick note, ladies and gents, if you have adjacent, the component force is of the form cos theta. If you have opposite, the component force is of the form sine theta. So over here, we have the adjacent, therefore cos theta. Over here, we have the opposite, therefore sine theta. So that there is my complete force diagram. Another important note, in the exam, if it says that a particle is moving at constant velocity, you need to take the acceleration to be zero very important. Here is an exam style question. A force of 20 newtons is applied to a box of mass mkg causing the box to accelerate at 0.5 meters per second per second along a smooth horizontal plane. Given that the force causing the acceleration is applied at an angle of 25 degrees to the plane, work out the value of m. The first step is to set up a force diagram. So we have a smooth plane, a box on the smooth plane, of mass mkg, a force of 20 newtons applied at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal plane. Now because the horizontal plane is smooth there is no friction acting between the plane and the box. We have the weight of the box which is mg, the normal reaction of the box which is r, and the component forces of the force 20 newtons, we need to form a right angle triangle. Starting from here, the force stretches out in this direction, so we take a right and then go upwards. The horizontal component of the 20 newton force is 20 cos 25 degrees. The vertical component of the 20 newton force is 20 sine 25 degrees. The box will accelerate to the right, so I can label my acceleration. And that acceleration is 0.5 meters per second per second. Ladies and gents, here is my complete force diagram. I now have two options. I can either resolve vertically using Newton's second law or horizontally using Newton's second law. If I resolve vertically, I will have two unknowns in my equation and those two unknowns are r and m. However, if I resolve horizontally, I will only have one unknown in my equation and that unknown will be the m. So in this particular case, we need to resolve horizontally. So I'm going to resolve horizontally using Newton's second law, f equal ma 
taking right to be the positive direction. First of all, I need to work out the F, the resultant force, acting horizontally. I've got 20 cos 25 degrees acting to the right, and no force acting to the left. So my resultant force F is just 20 cos 25 degrees. This must equal M multiplied by the acceleration, which is 0 0.5. Therefore, M is equal to 20 cos 25 degrees divided by 0 0.5. So if I put this into my calculator, I get 36.3 kg to three significant figures. Therefore, the mass of the box is 36.3 kg, correct to three significant figures. Here is another exam style question. A parachute is of mass 80 kg is attached to a canopy by two lines, each with tension T. The parachute is falling with constant velocity and experiences a resistance to motion due to air resistance equal to one quarter of her weight. Show that the tension in each line T is 20 square root 3 G newtons. Now G is just 9.8 meters per second per second. It is the acceleration due to gravity. Before we tackle this problem, we need to label all the other forces acting on the parachutist. So we've got a tension T this way, a tension T this way. For each of these tensions, you have component forces. So you need to form a right angle triangle. This tension T stretches in this direction, so you take a left and then you go up. This tension T stretches in this direction, so you take a right and then you go up. The horizontal component of this T Newton force is just T cos 60 degrees. The vertical component of this T Newton force is T sine 60 degrees. In the same way, this one over here is T cos 60 degrees. This one over here is T sine 60 degrees. Now we have resistance to motion due to air resistance. Because the parachutist is falling downwards, air resistance will act upwards. And that air resistance is just a quarter of the weight, 80 G. So a quarter of 80 G is 20 G, acting upwards. So here is my complete force diagram for the parachutist. We need to tackle this problem now. We need to show that T is equal to 20 square root 3 G. So to work out T, I can resolve vertically taking upwards to be the positive direction using F equal MA. In the question, we are told that the parachutist is moving with constant velocity. Constant velocity implies that A is equal to zero. Therefore, this particular law over here, which is Newton's second law, reduces to F equals zero. Now I want to generate my equation. Taking upwards to be the positive direction, vertically the resultant force will be T sine 60 degrees plus T sine 60 degrees plus 20G minus 80G that there is my resultant force. It must equal to zero. Now, 20G minus 80G is just minus 60G. And over here, we've got two lots of T sine 60 degrees. So 2T sine 60 degrees minus 60G is equal to zero. Now, I need to make T the subject. Firstly, I know that sine 60 degrees is just square root three over two. So 2T, multiplied by square root 3 over 2. I can take the minus 60g to the other side to give me equal 60g. 2 multiplied by square root 3 over 2 is just square root 3. So square root 3, t is equal to 60g. Now I can divide both sides by square root 3 to give me t is equal 60g over square root 3. I can rationalize, multiply top and bottom by square root 3. And by doing this, I obtain precisely 20 square root 3 G Newtons. If you found this video useful, guys, please don't forget to subscribe.